All right, everyone, welcome to the Augur 8 Knot meeting for June 3rd, 2024. Um, <clears throat> you can uh, fill in your names if you like. Uh, sometimes put questions, but I did not include one today. And I see some new folks, so um, I thought it would be, I think it might be good to just, uh, you know, introduce yourselves. Um, I'm Sean. I'm one of the Augur maintainers. I facilitate this working group. Um, uh, I'll pass it to Gary, who's next in my, my video list. <laughs> hey, I'm Gary. I uh, work for Verizon. I use Augur um, for collecting data about what open source components we care about and then processing that data in uh, a obsolescence way, which is something you'll hear me say if you're in any meetings with me. <clears throat> Hey everyone, I'm Prudvi. Uh, so I just, you know, I recently joined Red Hat as a data scientist intern. So I might be working on this Augur related projects. So yeah. Excellent. Mentor nice to Callie meet. is here. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what I call her too, my mentor Callie. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll introduce myself. Consider <laughs> that intro. <laughs> Um, Ali, I am a senior data scientist at Red Hat, and I am the um, main maintainer for the Eight Knot project. All right. Thanks, Kelly. You want to pass it to someone? Or... <clears throat> I guess Enoch, you can go. You you mic'd uh, up, so. <laughs> hi everyone. Um, my name is Enoch Casada, and I am in Tay Nine Chaos. And I'm um, trying to also navigate my way around um, the Agar project. <clears throat> nice to meet you all. All right. And um, Lami, I don't know if you, Lami might not have a mic that works today. And Emmanuel was here, but it looks like Emmanuel bumped off. Can I hear you? I can, yeah. <clears throat> We can uh, hear can you. anyone hear me? Oh, okay. Uh, um, I'm Lami, a member of Kiosk Africa, working on the design for Ogo. All right, welcome, welcome, Lami, welcome, everyone. And Emmanuel, who was on here, <clears throat> um, uh, is uh, no longer on here, but if he comes back, Emmanuel is working with Lamy on the uh, eight knot auger redesign. And uh, one, <clears throat> I answered a question in, in Slack, I think, Lamy, about the relationship yeah. between auger and eight knot from a user experience perspective. And you pointed out, I think rightly, that it's boy, it would be nice if we weren't bouncing between two different sites. And I, I think. For now, that's sort of an artifact of the way that we built it. And I don't think we have enough, I don't think we have people um, able to do that work to, to sort of, I don't know, much to change that design characteristic or those design characteristics <clears throat> right now. So I think, I don't know, Kelly, what do you think? Uh, I think from some perspective yeah it, i mean we don't have time that yeah. <laughs> i guess it's like we I'd love to have an en like engineer would be something that once we have a software engineer back in the data science team that would be probably that'd be something that would be probably right behind some of like the redesign stuff um even though i'm planning on starting that on my end um but yeah i mean i agree it's annoying and it causes like hard corners <clears throat> and down the road would like to make that not the case but when that will be that's that's the question also it'd be a kind of another um opening up another idea of i know you and i have talked about this sean of how to start trying to recruit new contributors that are specific like like technical <laughs> contributors or mm -hmm. that's something that we don't have a whole lot of people in chaos that actively write code. 
Yeah, we're a very strange uh, open source software project in that uh, this meeting is the software part uh, <laughs> out of our 10 meetings every two weeks. <clears throat> and, and with that in mind, I think if there's, so I guess one thought I had so on the design point, my one thought I had is like, it doesn't hurt anything for design to take a blue sky approach, um, by which I mean, you know, dream big. It's, I don't know, it's an expression I've heard before. I don't know if, if it's still used by people to, to design it as though there was a, a single site. It's just that when you do that, if you were to do it that way, well, I mean, it, um, it wouldn't work that way for a while. I don't know. What do you think, Kelly? Is it uh, potentially distracting or is there, are there downsides to the blue sky approach to the design part? Uh, okay, Kali commented that she would should be back soon, but I also wanted to ask. Oh, if, sorry, I, I, chat um, disappears for me <laughs> when uh, I share my screen, so I have to bring yeah, it up. Okay. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that happens. It's <clears throat> soon. Uh, okay, so from the design perspective, it will be nice for even if we have like two separate websites for the style to be similar, so mm -hmm. it doesn't look like you are going from one completely different platform to another. So if we design separate websites, is there still a possibility that um, chaos.ai would be developed? Uh, I see. I think, I think you're asking if we could apply um, a slightly, so I think the, <clears throat> the, for AI, for the Augur front end where people enter repos to be collected, we have, the relatively not difficult where it's not difficult to change for example colors so that the color scheme on that site would match the color scheme on eight knot um, when it gets to changing the design characteristics of that site <clears throat> i think i would approach i would approach that process as if they were integrated and then we, they won't be, but we could do our best to implement changes, uh, you know, some kind of sort of temporary or intermediate level changes. Does that make sense? We could at least modify the color scheme to match um, with limited effort. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I think the best approach right now would be for us to design them separately. Because if we um, take the quote, blue sky approach that you mentioned, and that would be having everything in one place, would have certain elements on the screen that would point to metrics.io that won't make sense in a, a world where we have two different websites. So um, I think designing two different websites would be a better approach for now. Okay, um, Kelly. So, so what we're discussing, and I asked you a question without having seen the chat because Zoom isn't perfect. Uh, one thing I'd suggested was maybe we blue sky the things that are on the Augur front end as integrated, knowing that we won't implement them. And after some discussion, I think Lamy is suggesting it would be better to. Um, recommend some design changes on the auger site for now since we don't have engineering time um, the other approach we could take is to just be optimistic that we'll get someone to volunteer to work with us on that um yeah, i don't know what do you think kelly i'm a yeah, little bit unsure think, what to do yeah i think that we should i like the idea that Lami has of like doing like some like viewing it as two different sites doing some changes to make them seem similar and let's try to go about recruiting, trying to recruit some more software engineering help. And if that comes to fruition, then we can start doing that from a design perspective because we already have more than enough work for people on the engineering front. And so that's kind of, I think you take like a middle, middle ground approach with the planning. So leaving room for all the options to come to fruition. Okay, so does that, uh, Lamy, does that give you um, a 
enough of a sort of a frame to go forth with that part of the design work? Yes, it does. And I'd also ask and like to ask Emmanuel what he thinks. Emmanuel, I see that you're back. Before the call. Yeah, um, I, I think one aspect I would just want to also confirm is that um, if we if, if it's just wait, sorry, I have my <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. Is that a baby? Yes, yeah, my son. Ah, hello. <laughs> yeah, needs to enter his name. <laughs> his name is David. Hello, baby. No, he's not baby. He's David. 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 Oh, Davy. Hi, hi, Davy. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was saying that. I think what you what you mentioned is that uh, we just make cosmetics page right now to Argo, right, to fit into Ignot's um style right now. Not necessarily yes. any elementary change like component changes as much, but then right. we have that in one part. Then we also keep working on the blue screen, like sort of like how we could further integrate both of them together in a separate project. Hopefully, that we find. A developer that will contribute to that is that what you mean yes yeah okay. because i yes because i think that the uh, long term uh we want to limit how much time we spend on auger design for the front end uh because that's not what it is or that's not what it's great at all right thanks emmanuel thanks lami um are there are there oh, any design sorry. yeah go ahead yeah, I have a few more things to say. Um, so what we are agreeing now again is to only do um style changes to um other front end. I had a couple of questions on um the functions, certain functions on the website. But I'm wondering if like is yeah, there room for that or just yeah. That? No, I, I think if, okay, if there are okay. function changes, uh, you can recommend them. I'm I'm expecting that those function changes are related to a better user experience. Okay, yes. So um, could you go to Figma? I, I have screenshots of the pages. Yeah. Um, do, do you want me to give you screen share or do you want to share your screen? Is that what you're asking? No. Um, or, oh, go to Figma. Just go to Figma. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Yep. Sorry. I just have to go down to here and get the link from a previous meeting. Sorry. Okay. And what should I click? Or do you want me to like uh, follow you? Follow me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll start here. Um, I noticed that the repo view has like the repo page has two views, and then both views have like different information. Yeah. Is this deliberate? And if it's so not, are we fine with having the same things on it? And what's what are the most important stuff to have? So I I think it would be great if we included. Uh, so I think if I was to think about it, like the reports link, I don't think that one's ever going to happen because that's what. That's actually what you get when you click on the repo name. So the design could just remove the reports column over over on the left entirely. And change requests are the only thing I think for which we have like just statistical count data in the database that is not displayed on the front end right now. So if I was to, I would say you could take out the reports column, leave the change requests column and add change requests count to that card view if you if that would be the reasonable approach given what we have okay then is there something that's supposed to be after repository status or does this <laughs> cover here both of this the, the, uh, i i don't know i don't recall what's supposed to be after repository status but um it should be some kind of collection status that we're not providing right now so I think in this design, you could simply remove it. All right. And repository ID? 
repository ID is really not something I guess. Okay. So what I would say is repository ID can be useful for people who want to build uh, additional interfaces using the Augur API because you need the repository ID as a parameter to pass to the API. So I think leave the repository ID there. Okay. And add it. Okay. Add it. To yeah. List. Yeah. Add that's to... a good idea. Yeah. That's a good idea uh, to add it before... there. Okay. I didn't take a screenshot of this, but I noticed that when you click a an organization or a repo, you get like a, some pages similar to this. Uh -huh. You're not led to Augur 8 knots where you have the visualizations. Yeah, Is that, that what's supposed to happen? Yeah, yeah, there's some, it's like nine visualizations that exist in Augur that you that you see. I, that is what it does right now. We we could do the design. Um, so another yeah another way to consider the Augur design is to just take all data presentation out of it entirely, and simply yeah. provide just provide the admin view um, where people can add repos and see their repo groups. Um, what what do you? I heard Kelly say yeah, so I think that that yes. might be the way to go. <laughs> This is something I've been wanting to bring up for a while because I think it's confused. I, I think it causes a lot of confusion. And I think it makes it a lot easier to explain the relate. Like since we do have to stick with the relationship of these two sites, it's like okay, eight knot is your visualization, your metrics, and then the Augur front end is truly a front front end to your Augur database. That's how you can interact a little bit more directly with your data, load in new repositories, and I think people and honestly, rightfully so, get a little bit confused once they see that. And a lot of times those visualizations are broken. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm very <clears throat> pro taking those out of the auger front end completely. All right, Lamy. So okay. in this so what we're saying then is the main landing page for Augur would be the profile page um, for a user where they okay. would either create an account or um, do something else. Okay, so this repo list would now live on Augur 8 nodes, or do we still it, want it at all? I think um, we don't want any. Anywhere. I think taking the visualizations out is useful. Um, Leaving the numbers is kind of, which we might want to discuss a different way of doing it, but those numbers, at least for me, is the way that I know that the repositories have been fully collected on. So the number of like that number of commit count and stuff is like a good is like the reference point for collection for me. Um, so I now that I've thought about I'm thinking as, about this as I'm talking, at the very least I would I would like to leave the commit and issue just count because it is a good marker to tell you where your repository is at in collection or how up to date it is because it's just a flat number. Okay, okay, um, I understand. But what I'm asking is, um, okay, from what you said previously, what I understood was that we should take out repos completely. So this page would not exist at all on Augur front uh, end. No, so I'm I, asking that. I guess that's not what so, I meant. It's when so you take out one, when you click one portion further, it gets you to a page of a bunch of visualizations, or a lot of times a bunch of empty visualizations. This view. Um, the card view of it is I don't use it, so I can't really speak to it. But actually having that repository ID, I didn't even know that was there. That's kind of nice. But the um, table view, I use that almost daily. Um, it's how I can tell if repositories have been loaded into groups. But I guess this is on the repo page. If we took this out, is this would take out the groups as well? I don't know. I guess I can only speak to how I use it. And mm, so the okay. table... The table view of it I use to be like, okay, let me check. Is the repository I'm looking for already collected on? If so, where is it at in its collection? But once you click on the name of any of them, that takes you to a different, an, uh, another page. And that's the page that yeah. I'm talking about that I think is confusing okay. people. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And so the page should not exist at all. The name 
the link should not lead anywhere. Yeah, yeah. that's what I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Get rid of that. The thing that you did not include, let's not include. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this is just me thinking again that is there um, a reason why it can lead to the um, visualizations on Ogo It Not? Um, I like the idea of it, and I think we could. I think that is something that I like the idea. I don't know if it can be, but if it can, that would be great because it's something that people have been asking for is being able to open up 8Not to a specifically searched repository. And right now we can't, but I don't see why we couldn't. And so I actually do like the idea of it being that when we click into it, it takes it to the 8Not page with the that repository or organization search on. Um, and so I don't know exactly when that would be, but that's something that would be technical, like is it more, way more in the realm of possibility than like bringing the two websites together. So mm -hmm. let me open an issue on 8Not to start looking into that. Yeah, because I, I think there's a lot of these uh, cases for that for that functionality, and so it makes it a lot easier to prioritize. Okay, there's this one here. Uh, the add-in repo uh, text box. Is this a particular format? Because I tried to do it and I could not figure out how to add the URL. Is this the format a user is supposed to add the URL? Uh, why, yeah. why is this written like this? Um, I guess those are the couple of different formats it could be. So you like, yeah. I guess I'll let Sean talk about it. But how is it? Yeah. So it's um, you can put for for GitHub. You can include just like for example, chaos chaos slash auger would be org slash repo. Um, chaos would be org, and you can just include that text. And it'll collect everything if you put chaos in there on every repo on the chaos org. If you want a GitLab repository, and this should be in there, actually, I should open an issue for that. Um, you can put a GitLab repository or org in there with uh, the full URL uh, to each of them. And then you can also add GitHub repos with full URLs to the org or the repo itself. So those are just prompts to tell you the format that you can use. Okay, and um, I'm asking this question again because I think it will be useful to to like give an example, um, explain what users can do. So can users add repos that are not on Ogre, or they have to be on Ogre? The what? So this is where you add them to Augur. So if if you're in an Augur instance, uh, this will add repos to, and this is a little bit tricky, which. It's tricky to explain. Imagine an Augur instance that 100 people share. If I added the chaos project mm -hmm. to groups that I've defined in my profile, which is what this page is, then the data exists in that Augur instance. And when someone else comes along and adds chaos to a group on their profile, the data will already be there. If I hadn't previously added the chaos org to that Augur instance, and another person adds chaos to their repo or to their profile, then that tells Augur to go collect that data. Okay, and it does that automatically. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's yeah. The one thing that will be interesting, I think this is gonna be more on the technical side, and we've been fighting for a while. I feel like is um, a good way of making the users know that collection actually has been triggered. But I guess it's like if, if the app behaves as it's supposed to, that always should be the case. But knowing when it doesn't, but I don't know that's more, I don't think that's necessarily a design question. That's more of a um, engineering implementation question because we've been running into that. But this last week, I don't think I had any issues. I don't know if any repositories failed collection like they were before I left on PTO, but it definitely was like, a, I had to wait a lot longer to see them in the 
represented in the front end, which that doesn't necessarily bother me if I know if I have confidence in it. I yeah. Whenever I know it's okay. gonna happen. All right, I think I can ask some of the other questions offline, but this is one okay. that can be so we don't take so much time. Uh, so again, I think this should be answered offline because it might be long, but I'm wondering if you can explain this because I don't really understand what happens okay. here and if well, there's a need to. So if you don't understand what happens there, that suggests that uh, there's a problem. But basically what that's saying is if the data already exists for a repo, if I had already put in something that you put on your profile, you'll see the data right away. If it's something that wasn't already in that Augur instance, then it the core data on the metrics pages takes up to a day uh, to get loaded. And um, that's what I'm trying to, that's what's trying to be explained there is if, if there isn't another person that wanted that data, then it's gonna, Augur has to go get that data and that doesn't happen instantly. That, you know, that can take 24 hours. And right now with the size of the Augur instance, probably 36 hours or 48 hours is a better estimate, candidly. And so, yeah, if you have different suggestions okay, of how we can work oh. that, we can work that, which I do think it's like, this is whole page has been something I feel like we've been fighting for a while of how to, how to do it in a user-friendly way. All right, I would um, go through it again, and if there are any suggestions, I'll make them and send the other questions to Slack. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, thanks, Lami. Thanks for all your hard work. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. Um, thanks. I, I had a couple of other brief Augur updates, and Gary, I don't know if you have anything to add here. Um, we're, I'm still working with some folks to make Augur easier to start up on your own with Docker. That's um, kind of an ongoing challenge. Uh, with so so, I guess I'm I guess that's still in progress. Um, I did stop the ability to add new repos on the public instance, the software as a service collection, last week. So the metrics.chaos.io remains up, um, but and I'll turn the ai.chaos.io back on today. Uh, but there were some there were just a lot of new repos getting added, and I needed to take a pause and just assess collection gaps so that I understood the dynamics of collection and what was taking longer than I expected it to take and how, uh, because adding new repos made it harder for me to track that. But I'll turn that back on. And then um, down here, uh, I never, I have been traveling for the past two weeks and Don is traveling this week. So there's really, uh, no updates on getting data out of the SAS this instance and the licensing data particularly. So um, I just need, I'll leave what that is, one. What is this? This, I think this so is this, I came up whenever I was. The, the yeah. The PTOs are, are, really, are really getting everybody. <laughs> yeah, so this, uh, in the last meeting, uh, Don uh, was asking about uh, accessing the data without disrupting the SAS instances and, and ways to do that. and. The challenge we face right now with the SAS instance is because it's very large and it's collecting fairly aggressively. Uh, this is a basic like data system design problem that's been encountered by technology professionals for the last 40 years pretty consistently. If we have Augur going out and getting tons of data and inserting it into the database, which creates a substantial load on the database, when and, and 8 not is optimized to limit the amount of demand it places on the database when it retrieves data. So that works. It's pushing the database to the edge of reasonable, but it works. Um, there are some other considerations uh, that need to be made for, or we'd like to make for folks who want to analyze uh, Augur data in a more ad hoc fashion. Um, and that's the architecture that is like, there are two considerations. One is the performance. Uh, the other is ensuring that uh, there is no, uh, in the, in the pro providing of that data, that there's no incidental or accidental uh, access to PII, personally identifiable information, 
or any data that is in violation of GDPR or the IRB that I have uh, for the public auger instance. So there are some tech, both infrastructure scale uh, technology for auger and eight knot and data privacy uh, challenges around this question that Don and I uh, are intending to to discuss, but we haven't found a time in between the last meeting that we had while I was in Finland and today, which we're having uh, on my first day back from my trip to Finland and Sweden for Sounds, eight knot yeah. auger research. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, I'm happy to be a part of those discussions if y'all are looking for another voice or perspective or if you're y'all are too taking it on, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. So this is just something we've has come up within Red Hat a couple of times over the the years. And I'll be honest, we've never come to a good concise answer. Like we've we've come up with answers for each use case, not like an overall like definite like how do we go about doing data in the open is still Right. And I th so I and I think so so Red Hat has its own instance of Augur eight knot and so that puts that puts Red Hat in a position of being able to define those use considerations for that instance. Um, yeah. And I'm actually talking with um, Brian. Uh, he's still in Bratislava. I didn't realize yeah. that. <laughs> I didn't know how yeah, long he. No. I, I know he's going to be gone for three weeks. So I talked with him briefly this morning. He's like, "Dude, I'm still in Bratislava," and I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> we'll talk uh, next week when you're caught up." Um, but it's so they're, they're, the web of the web of tr of work of conference travel and PTO is just yeah it, yeah it's just it's a been a been of a, a bit of a hard to make a connection missed it's been a missed connections um, situation for all of us for about two or three weeks now so yeah so there's I think there's some possibilities of collaborating with Red Hat for um, some of this as well but I don't want to like I don't know what shape that might take. Uh, I yeah. think the most important thing is just that uh, we recognize these issues um, and because I'm a university researcher responsible for the public instance and it's under my IRB, I have, I have different constraints, probably more severe ones than Red Hat might have, but maybe not. So that's, you know, we might have all the same constraints, um, but maybe the yeah. performance constraint can be removed with additional support or whatever. So all of like, I guess that part is just kind of in motion right now. And I think it seems like maybe give us a month to, to sort some of this out a little bit better. Yeah, it sounds good. Yeah. I'd be coming in with the, to those conversations with my chaos community member hat with the, just the knowledge of some of the conversations that have happened in Red Hat over the years, more so than it being like, well, how does this apply to Red Hat? If that makes sense. Yep. All right, so I just added like that's our update that there's just a lot of moving parts. Um, yes. So I guess the next question is uh, that's that's sort of all the things that were in the in my brain uh, as I organized the agenda for today. Are there are there other points or items or discussion topics that anyone wishes to bring forward right now? Yeah, I have a, I'll kind of just do my general updates. It's been a few weeks since I've been in this call. Um, now that I'm back from PTO, um, a lot of the work that I'm doing in my day to day is like, is just coordinating with like the new interns that are coming in. And um, one of the big things, which I don't know if it necessarily applies directly to this meeting, but chaos in general, that I'm still working with IBM about open of them open sourcing some SBOM analysis work, which would fall would fall under the software branch of chaos and that that home and pushing for chaos to be that home. I have meetings with them next week, this week. And so I'm hoping that that's where this, how this ends up going. Um, but they seem pretty interested in open sourcing this and it moving under chaos instead of them just trying to open open sourcing something to open source it and then nobody touching it. 
And yeah, so I, that's that's great. Um, I mean, I, I bomb topics are online. I mine for a lot of people. Yeah, and there's and the the S bomb analysis that's in the Augur license repository is based on an older version of of the scanners that were developed for I think Phosology. So um, anything that's been updated is likely a bit more complete and compliant with uh, probably either current SPDX or cyclometrics or something. I forget what the other standard is, but. Uh, yeah, so some, a contribution like that would be fantastic. Um, it would be even better as if they're still developing and if they open sourced it. And I don't they really are. care where they open. Yeah, if they keep working on it, then that would be yeah, even they better. Yeah, this would be, they're still planning. I mean, they've been active, they've had a team actively working on it for a bit and the open sourcing of this doesn't, change. wouldn't be changing that. I think they're still planning on op on um, taking that into a product of some sort. So that would be the only thing that might limit limit it if IBM's still being a little touchy about their about open sourcing things. But we'll see. I'll keep people updated, and then I'm hoping to like start working on design stuff at least from a um, architectural standpoint and then on to a little bit on the spot but I was going to be curious to see with like Prude V if you were able to get Augur up and running or considering there's a lot of people working on trying to get that the process of starting up Augur in a better place having somebody doing it might be able to give some good feedback yeah Prude V um to, to that point, if um, Gary Gary White, who I don't know if Gary's still on the call, or if he had to drop, it looks like he had to drop. But uh, Gary's done some work on the um, on the Dockerization of Augur, and and we've gotten a, we've made some progress. I, mm -hmm. So if uh, if you want to like yeah, where have, have you been able to get Augur up and running? I guess is to Kelly's question. Uh, yeah, I think I was facing a couple of issues. Uh, I'll try to resolve them today. Yeah, I should be able to uh, make it up and run. Yeah. If uh, if exactly. you have trouble, use the there Slack be... channel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Use the Augur sure. not Slack channel because we'll pay attention to that. Sure. Sure. Sweet. All right. If uh, if anyone if no one else has uh, items, then I uh, I think we're done. Yeah, sure. I'm. Um, I was just waiting for the other people to speak. I I was trying sure. to move around some of the issues that are a little bit old in the Aga repository related Good. to the API endpoints. Um, if if you could just have time to scroll to the project board that you created some time earlier back last year. I was trying to make sure that um there are no stale um yeah so I'm I moved if we just go to column view I think it would be a better view than the card uh, view card view there. okay yeah so uh, um I created a new column called QA because I realized all those APIs are probably all created um just uh, no I no I don't them. think so. I put them there. Yeah, that's why I put them there because I, I was like, this looks like it's been created and I was going to... Oh, I see. So you, you went and looked at the existing API and you think that these endpoints do exist already. Yeah, that's why I put them there. I didn't put them in done, but I just wanted to give them a second look. Oh, then, good. That's helpful. And, Thank you, Enoch. And then the ones that are in the to-do, um, I also created like a pull request for some of the um, updates to the documentation of some of these APIs more so the links were a little broken. And oh. um, I'm thinking if you could just come to the to-do here and um, look at 
some API endpoints that are critical for creating, um, I could start on those and get them um, up and running in the time they may require to take. What's what's I'm sorry, what is the at what's the request Enoch? Yeah. I'm, I didn't. I I lost know, it. I'm like if you if you if 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 there are some critical endpoints that you've been like wanting to create because there was so uh, many things that to do. Uh, I see. I so no prior, prior prioritize them is what you're suggesting. Yeah, I had no idea what what is important and what's not important, and yeah. I couldn't like so, um, start on any uh, anything. So these these endpoints are endpoints that are useful. So these map to specific chaos metrics. That's yeah, how each yeah. of these issues was defined. Yeah. Yeah. And at this point, I don't have any more or less um, interest or I don't I don't have any anything material that says this X is more important than Y, okay. uh, for example. OK. But I know I know all of them have been like defined in the in the chaos metrics, and it's just a matter of implementing them so that they work well with agar. But I, right. guess, I just thought maybe there there are some that are more important than the others because there were so many. I don't I don't have no. I think it's a uh, just choosing them. I don't think there are any that are I know I know to be more important than others. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All it would right. be helpful if there was a prioritization, but no, 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 this, okay. this project okay. is really about updating the API so that the documentation in Augur for those endpoints is mapped more clearly to the current definitions of the metrics. And just for history, for those who aren't familiar, uh, the reason this is happening now is because at the very beginning of Augur, like seven years ago, we did explicitly map all the endpoints to metric definitions. Uh, but the chaos project kept changing those URLs and after like the fourth time that they changed, we just kind of gave up mapping the documentation to our API documentation. And uh, now we've got stable URLs so we can, uh, in fact, put put the links directly to chaos metrics back in our docs. So that's that's really what this is about at an overarching level. Yeah. All right. Um. That that means I have chance to like pick out any of um the APIs endpoints here and start working on them since there is no priority. Yeah. There's no um, distinct. There's no um distinct priority or high, there's no ranking of the ones that are in the to do for this project. Right. All right. All right. All right. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Um. Thanks. For, I will see you all in two weeks. Sounds good. See y'all then. Hey, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye.